Welcome back. So we're talking about the SVD, and one of the most important things you need to know when you're using the singular value decomposition for dimensionality reduction of a data matrix X is how your data is aligned. Okay, so in that example of eigenfaces where we take each column of X is a picture of a human face that's been reshaped into a column vector, it was critical that all of those images were cropped and aligned so that the same pixels, the same rows of X meant the same thing from image to image. So that uh, image one, this pixel, it means an eye pixel, even in image two and three and four. It's the same meaning across all of the pixels because the SVD is based on correlations of the columns and of the rows. And so if I take the dot product of two columns, and the mouth is over here in one image and over here in another, then the dot product doesn't really mean anything. Then closeness of those two vectors doesn't mean anything. And so oftentimes we're gonna use this uh, SVD for dimensionality reduction in image classification or image compression. And in that case, you really do need to have um, some kind of alignment of your data features. Uh, even more importantly, when you have, um, when you're using this for physics modeling, like maybe this is data from a simulation, uh, of a physical system, so columns are the state of a physical system as they evolve in time. Maybe I have a traveling wave or a rotating wave or something like that. The SVD is really gonna struggle to find a low rank representation of a traveling or rotating structure because it's not aligned in terms of the rows and the columns of the data matrix, okay? And so the examples that I have here are cooked up to walk you through kind of what can go wrong if you have a low rank matrix and you rotate it or, or translate it or something like that, okay? And again, all of this code is at databookuw.com. Uh, this is the MATLAB version. And so the first code, what I'm gonna do is essentially just cook up a large um, example of two data matrices. This is literally just a data matrix um, that has zeros and ones, so it's black and white. Uh, this one has low rank structure, so if I take the SVD of this matrix, it is almost entirely characterized by one uh, singular value, one extremely energetic singular value, and everything else is below the, the noise floor, kind of machine precision uh, noise, because this data is aligned. There is essentially one eigen row and one eigen column that describe that you can multiply together to make this entire matrix, okay? Um, essentially, you would, you would literally just multiply, um, you know, that, that column by that row, and what you would get out would be this matrix, okay? So it's really a one, a rank one matrix, um, you know, zeros and ones with rank one. But if you even rotate this a little bit, if you rotate this a little bit, then the, the same kind of row and column information from before gets destroyed. So that's what we're seeing over here on the right is just a slightly rotated version of this matrix where now you can see that you actually have a very, very high rank effective SVD. So when you look at the singular values, these are the, the logs of the diagonal elements of sigma, these singular values take a long time to decay. It's over 200 rank system, 250 uh, degrees of freedom are, are needed to add up to equal this matrix. Even though as humans, we know that nothing really changed. This is still a rank one object in a rotated frame. But the SVD can't figure that out unless you align that data into a frame uh, where everything kind of clicks into place, okay? And it's, you can make kind of a nice visualization out of this um, where you just rotate through increasingly large angles here. So this is another code uh, in the book where you basically take that same idea and you just rotate it more and more and more. And what you can see in rainbow colors here, so as you go from yellow to orange to blue to bright blue, the rank just gets worse and worse and worse as you take this thing out of alignment uh, in, in rows and column spaces. So again, the SVD is not magic. It's based entirely on correlations between the columns of X and, and each other and the rows of X and each other. And so if you take something low rank and kind of rotate it so that those, that alignment disappears in row and column space, you're gonna get this rank explosion. Uh, and so this is really important. If you have data, similarly, if I took data of, of a square moving across the screen, so I had a movie uh, of, a, of a square moving across a screen, or if my data had you know, something moving across uh, the columns, 
even if it was the same object, the SVD would still give you a very high rank system because it doesn't know about translational invariance or rotational invariance, even though as humans, we're really good at detecting these things and recognizing that these are all just squares at different rotation angles. Okay, so something to be aware of uh, when you use the SVD, it can be really, really useful if rows and columns mean the same thing from data set to data set. So uh, as a kind of a counter example of, of how what can go wrong, um, if we go back to that ovarian cancer data set where we had um, 216 people and something like 4,000 genetic markers, that's a great example of the data being aligned because it was the same genetic marker. Column 500 was the same genetic marker across all of the people. And column 501 was the same other genetic marker. And so the data was somehow aligned so that you know columns meant the same thing um, across all of the patients, all of the people. Okay, so this is a cautionary tale. You have to be careful when doing the SVD and make sure that your data um, is kind of aligned and cropped and, uh, and organized so that you expect that there to be, there, there will be uh, these kind of row-wise and column-wise correlations. Okay, thank you.